Hi. Good morning and welcome to Interstellar Observatory No. 7 where we explore our world and beyond. This third probe was internal in our earthly welcome home mass text. Come along with us. Third probe internal. The earthly welcome home mass text. Perhaps, the first thing we ought to do after witnessing the cosmos gradual movement across night's skies is consider mankind's relationship with as much as can be fathomed. Realizing the distance and magnitude of both, magnitude of distance and the latter of the former of Earth in relation to the universe we might ought to bow to its magnificence. Of the chaos and disorder in the world, we must be thankful to whomever however long ago made it possible for us to be here today in relative peace. Caught up in the hustle and bustle of interaction in the world, time to look up to study stars most common men seldom find the time. Of the random juxtaposition of stars, planets, constellations, and Burgundians we see in night skies, stationary, what is opposite the sun, not the Earth. If we were at the center other bodies wouldn't have orbits of their own. In night skies our backs are to the sun until dawn when the dominance of the sun returns anew. Waiting days for night's astronomers where in winter at midnight on the solstice the Earth is at the vanguard of the sun's assault wherever its destination may be. Taking a heliocentric view, we can ball up a fist leaving it stationary and rotating the other fist as planets do the sun and imagine the emptiness of the void in an only search for light. Numa Pompilius, the second king of Rome after Romulus, divided the cosmos into 12 sections equally 30 degrees apart, thus, squaring the circle with 360 degrees. Reigning from 715 to 672 BC amongst other things he is known for the addition of January and February to the then Roman calendar which evolved to what we go by today. Our Earth is the system's third satellite and quite unique, but personified in the Greek goddess Gia she is considered by many and called by other names. The planet Earth though seeming natural is one of trillions of other bodies where circumstances could have been otherwise but weren't. It is almost at least highly unlikely out here somewhere in the void hurtling through time and space that odds were against life than in its favor but on Earth life resided. As far as I know or anyone that we've ever talked to knows there is no other planet with intelligent life, thank the Lord. The Earth with just over 70% water is a ocean world and to our knowledge the only planet of its kind. Though most of its water is in its two polar regions it still covers well enough. The surface of the Earth however many million eons ago jutted from this oceanic planet to a mass of land that we call Gia or from what it came to be Pangaea. This mass of soil, rocks minerals, and more as tectonic plates shifted over eons is made up of seven tectonic plates distinct land masses from those plates formed to the continents on which we live now. The supercontinent of the late Paleo and early Mesozoic periods, it may seem hard to think as enormous as they seem, floated on the liquid hot magma of the Earth's outer core. Though man has only dug around two miles, and theory and hypothesis are all we have, the Earth's liquid outer core creates a magnetosphere that protects us from harmful cosmic radiation and destructive solar winds. Geologists believe as the Earth cooled heavier elements of the Earth's core sank and cooler, solidified forming a multi-layered core. Below the Earth's crust on which we live an outer and inner mantle-like asphalt surrounds a liquid outer and solid moon-sized inner core of nickel and iron. Our dynamic atmosphere is what nurtures the life we hold so dear for this speck of time which we as mankind have habit this planet. Primarily of nitrogen and oxygen without the atmosphere there are be no life. Our Earth is called by many names. But as the discovery of the new world, Australia, and Antarctica what was known as Gia transformed to the more accurate term Pangaea. The personification of the Earth was to the Greeks a primordial feminine deity named Gia or Gaia who, at times parthenogenic, reproducing asexually, was the ancestral mother of mankind. As mother and consort to the sky, Uranus, she bore from him the Titans, the Cyclops, and Giants, in myth of course. <laughs> she also bore the sea called Pontus from whose union primordial sea gods came into existence. As this is an oceanic world, Gia and Pontus if followed in myth are just as colorful and many as her and Uranus, but under the sea where Poseidon rules and Atlanteans live. Mythology, along with nitrogen and oxygen, fill our atmosphere where sure, we eat food for the maintenance of our bodies, but stories of what and who we are provide nourishment for our minds. We are all but common men where whether thought more of one mind with every other living thing through the soul or of the matter, minerals, and nutrients in the universe, alive we claim both. This third rock from the sun we call Earth is called by names different from Gia or Pangaea. To Germans Earth is Erdi, Luxembourgish Erd, and even in Arabic pronounce it similarly, while the Welsh call the Earth Deer. From Latin we get the word Terra as in Italian, Portuguese, and similarly with Corsican where in French it's Terra, and Spanish it's Tierra. Hungarians refer to it as the Fold. Danish and most Scandinavians call it some derivative of Jordan, Icelandic it's Jr, Norwegian it's Jordan for the Swedes it's Jordan, but Finnish call it Mata. The Irish and Gaelic call it Ptolemy. Some call it a derivative of Zemias Czechs and Latvians. Slovakians call it Zeb. To the extent of our research, we are trapped by the A's, B's and C's from a Western perspective, and from here we view our world and beyond. Others may or may not call the Earth what we do or personify it as we have, but whatever we call it, it is what it is, and we are here, so let's make the best of it. Our Earth is the Sun's third satellite and quite unique, but personified in the Greek goddess Gia, she is considered by many and called by other names. As far as we know there are no other beings capable of considering themselves superior to everything in the universe in writing. Sure, when Wasp, B, 
bees or other animals attack they consider themselves superior from their duty to protect themselves or their territory, but man's is written. Personified in the Greek primordial feminine deity Gia, she bore Uranus, Sky, Pontus, Sea, and from them mankind. It's of more names than one from Gia to Zemi but still the same. That's all the information we have for you this session. Join us next session as we review information from our fourth celestial probe discovering Mars, the Red Planet Daily News. See you then, and thank you for your time and consideration.